Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I uh, will start with uh, electrochemistry. Uh, it is a branch of chemistry that studies the relation between electricity and uh, identifiable chemical changes where electricity can be cause or electricity can be output or effect. Now, uh, reactions involve electric, char electric uh, chain charge moving between electrodes or an electrolyte. Okay. So, it deals with electrical energy and chemical changes. Now, production of electricity from spontaneous chemical reaction, uh, a large number of like metals, uh, chemicals like sodium hydroxide, then chlorine etcetera are produced by electrochemical techniques, batteries, fuel cells etcetera. Here also electrochemistry is an integral part. Now, uh, reactions uh, that are uh, done with uh, this electrochemical technique, these, these are basically you know in some cases these are eco-friendly and uh, you know they do not generally produce uh, pollutions. Now, also the signal transmission in living system is also uh, known to have this electrochemical origin, electrochemical in origin. Now, uh, when we uh, talk about electrochemistry, then the first thing that comes is uh, you know conduction. So, conduction means conduction of electrical charge across some circuit. Now, uh, basically uh, here you know uh, whenever we talk about conduction then different type of uh, conductors are to be considered. One is uh, like uh, you know uh, this metallic conductor, <coughs> another is uh, non conductor or insulators, another is a semiconductor and the fourth one is you know this uh, electrolytic conductors. Now, uh, electrolytic conductors means uh, you know whenever we measure resistance across those materials like electrolytic conductors then uh, you know this resistance is arising as a result of something which is a little bit different from what is observed in case of say uh, metallic conductors. Now, in metallic conductors what is happening that suppose uh, this is a conductor. So, you are applying some potential difference across this circuit. So, electrons are transported from this side to that side. This is transported from this side to this side. So, uh, so as such from outside there is no change in the material that is in the in the conductor. Now, uh, when it is the case of uh, electrolytic conductor the situation is a little bit different that that you have a solution okay, and uh, you are immersing two electrodes. So, one is plus another is minus and when you measure resistance that means, some current is flowing across these two, uh, these two electrodes then what is happening that in this case you know this ions which are there inside this solution these are responsible for the for the carriage of charge from one place to another. Now, so, so uh, different type of types of conductors like good conductor So, these are almost fully conducting, almost fully conducting. Semiconductor, this is partially, partially conducting. Insulator, These are not conducting, 
Okay. <coughs> now, uh, I have just uh, talked about this conduction through metal and conduction through electrolytic solution. Now, what is the what are the typical differences in this metallic and electrolytic conductors? So, so uh, in case of metallic conductor, the electrons electrons are transported from one one position to the other and in case of say electrolytic electrolytic conductor ions are responsible ions means when you talk about ions that means uh, the substances which when are uh, uh, i mean dissolved in some solvent then they will produce ions and those ions against some applied potential difference they will you know move in a particular direction depending on the direction of the applied electric field okay so uh, in this case in in case of metallic conductor so no transport of matter no transport of matter is there matter is there but in this case electrolyte or ions are transported these are transported now uh, third difference can be like uh, the resistance is almost proportional to temperature and in this case generally resistance resistance decreases with rise of temperature. This is just a rough approximation I, I am not telling that exactly it is followed, but this is a rough approximation and in this case no chemical change but in this case chemical change is there at the electrodes. chemical change at the electrodes ok. So, these are the few uh, I mean these are the differences between a metallic conductor and electrolytic conductor ok. So, uh, now let us move on to another thing which is common that uh, that whenever we talk about uh, this conductivity then or conductivity or resistance that, that means when uh, when you talk about this conduction of electricity then one thing which is very important one parameter which is very important is the resistance of the of, of the medium resistance now resistance it's uh, it is basically proportional to length of the conductor and it is inversely proportional to the area cross sectional area of the conductor. So, for compound variation we can say R is proportional to L by A or we can write is equal to rho L by A it is rho is basically the specific resistance or resistivity of the medium. Okay, so, it is the resistance of 1 meter long you know conductor and if the cross sectional area is a unit then it, it will be called as the corresponding resistivity. Now, in, in terms of conductance of a solution the generally used term is the conductance I mean I mean not it is not expressed in terms of resistance, but it is expressed in terms of uh, conductance. So, conductance is nothing but inverse of resistance. So, conductance is inverse of resistance. Okay. So, what you can write? So, conductance 
is equal to 1 by rho into a by l. I mean from here we can write like this. So, this is this was specific resistance or resistivity and this is specific conductance or conductivity. So, unit of resistance is uh, ohm and unit of conductance is ohm inverse or m h o and in SI system it is Siemens. Okay. So, therefore, we can write conductance is equal to specific or conductivity into A by L or we can write from here we can write specific conductive conductance is equal to conductance into L by A which is basically a, a term which is given a new name cell constant. Why uh, do we write cell constant? I am coming to that. So, specific conductance. So, let us talk about unit of specific conductance. Specific conductance equal to conductance into cell constant. S conductance is Siemens into cell constant is L by A. L by A means length inverse. Okay. So, that means Siemens if it is centimeter then centimeter inverse or if it is uh, meter then it is uh, meter inverse. Okay. So, it is if it is uh, meter then Siemens meter inverse if it is expressed in meter, but it is SI system. So, therefore, it is better to better to use meter rather than centimeter. Okay. So, specific conductance is given a symbol kappa. So, kappa is equal to conductance into cell constant. <coughs> now, let us come to the point why it is a cell constant. Now, whenever we measure an unknown resistance, okay, whenever we measure an unknown resistance, we generally use this uh, celebrated uh, Wheatstone bridge principle. Now, this Wheatstone bridge principle is basically having this diagrammatic representation. So, this is your unknown resistance R 1 R 2. You have a device that which is in most of the cases the galvanometer source of electricity. So, when the deflection is when it is it is there is no deflection means the bridge is uh, balanced. Then ratio of these two this by this equal to this by this. So, R 1 by R 2 is equal to R 3 by R 4. 
So, from this R 1 <coughs> you can write R 3 by R 4 into R 2. So, if if this and this is a variable resistance. So, you can you can have this balance uh, of this uh, galvanometer deflection that is balance of this bridge when I mean at, at some appropriate value of R 2 then you can at the balance point balanced point. Okay. So, uh, this way you can find out the unknown resistance R 1. Okay. So, uh, now uh, when it is solution, solution means you have an electrolytic conductor other than I mean it is not uh, common this metallic conductor or some other kind of conductor then you have these two electrodes and you have you, you have to measure the resistance across these two electrodes. Okay. So, across these two electrodes means you need to have one electrode over here another electrode over here and then this two wires are basically these two wires. I mean you have to connect this this one this is represented like this your your electrolytic cell is represented like this. Okay. So, this is one unknown resistance say R 1. So, you place this over here. Okay. So, your this diagram looks like this one. So, you have to replace this with this one. Okay. Now, there is a little bit uh, difficulty in measuring this, this resistance or conductance of this electrolytic conductor. This is because of the fact that as I mentioned to you earlier while discussing the difference between a metallic conductor and an electrolytic conductor that is there is a there is some chemical change at the electrodes. Okay. So, so, since there is a chemical change uh, at the electrode then then during measurement of the resistance of this particular cell then the, the, the characteristic of this of this material is getting affected. Okay. So, therefore, that is why you have to construct a cell like this that you have your unknown uh, solution kept over here electrolytic solution kept over here you dip two electrodes and then you measure resistance, but while measuring resistance you have to be very careful that in this case in most in, in most of the cases when you use this Wheatstone bridge then you supply a DC current. Okay. In that case there is no problem in the measurement of the unknown resistance, but the moment you use DC current for this then there will be electrolysis or various electrode processes. So, electrode is getting affected and if the electrode is getting affected then you are not going to get the right value of R 1. So, in this case what you have to do? You have to use you have to make use of a different technique, but but the same Wheatstone bridge principle, but here in place of a DC supply you have to use AC. So, AC means it is a cosine profile as a function of time in this case intensity of the field and this is your time. So, what is happening that in the say first first positive half cycle if this electrode is positive then the other electrode is negative in the next half cycle over here the polarity is reversed this becomes minus this becomes plus. And if this alternation is symmetric that is area under the curve over here and area under the curve over here these two match then then what is happening uh, then in the positive half cycle whatever is generated over here and also over here the reverse is generated. But the point is so therefore, what is happening if a simple electrode is used then the accumulation of various material is there especially when you use water as a solvent then electrolysis product of water that is oxygen and hydrogen these are produced in equivalent amount on each of the electrodes. So, electrode will be affected electrode will be affected in the sense that it will be covered with those gases. So, therefore, characteristic of the electrode will be changed. 
So, therefore, in this case if you use a platinized platinum electrode, platinized platinum electrode means it is a smooth platinum plate on which this finely divided platinum metal particles are deposited on this and these are acting this can act as this can act as a catalyst for the recombination of oxygen and hydrogen to produce water. So, therefore, electrode will be electro electrodes will be you know freed from these accumulating gases. So, therefore, electrode characteristics will not be changed and, and, and as a result of which you can you can measure the actual resistance across these two electrodes. So, basically you are putting putting this cell over here that is why the cell constant is coming uh, over here. So, cell constant is nothing, but it is the ratio of the length length be between these two electrodes this is your L and A means this is your A this is the area you are talking about. Okay. So, th therefore, L by A is the cell constant. Okay. So, this way uh, so uh, this way you you make use of this AC supply to measure the resistance I mean the conductance of the of the of the cell that means conductance of the cell which is containing your required material. Now, how do you how will you will you identify this balance point of this Wheatstone bridge? This is done in a little different way. So, here this frequency of AC is about say 500 to say 1000 hertz or similar values are there and when the bridge is balanced that means you change your R2 in or you you, uh, you adjust your R2 in such a way that uh, that if you put a headphone over here then minimum sound will be will be uh, you know will be there and therefore therefore you will be uh, you will be you will you will get a confirmation that this uh, bridge is balanced and at the balance point whatever values of these are there i mean r3 r4 and r2 is there use make use of this to find out the value of your unknown resistance that means in turn you measure the the conductance of your unknown solution okay so uh, so therefore so what is the uh, expression that you generally use is specific conductance is equal to conductance into cell constant okay now let us have some idea about various conductors uh, various materials as far as their conductance value values are concerned so if you uh, if you consider materials like materials and their conductance it is in Siemens meter inverse. Okay. So, say for example, copper, copper metal its value is about 6 into 10 to the power 3. Silver its value is about say very close to this value I mean copper value. Okay. Glass its conductivity is very low it is about 1 into 10 to the power minus 16 pure water it is about about 4 into 10 to the power minus 5 for example uh, if it is 0 0.1 molar hcl its value is close to 4. Germanium it is about 2. So, you see that if you think this think about these two and think about this metallic conductor then it is its value I mean this conductivity is very high in case of pure water 
it is very low, but, but it is much better than glass or some other non conducting material. In case of you know this 0.1 molar HCl, it is about 10 to the power 5 times more than that of pure water. Okay. So, so why this is uh, this is happening? I mean, I mean it, the clear cut answer is that in 0.1 molar HCl you have H plus and C L minus ion. So, these are responsible for the transport of electrical charge from one position to the other. In case of pure water, it is feebly ionized, water is feebly ionized to H plus and OH minus very feebly ionized. So, therefore, since the ions present in water in pure water, th so these are very less in number therefore, conductivity is quite low. Okay. So, this gives you some idea about the conductivity of, of various materials. Next, next we will uh, we'll, uh, move on to another quantity which is called the molar conductivity. molar molar conductance molar conductance is the conductance of a solution which is having one molar substance dissolved in water and it is measured measured with two electrodes those are separated by those are uh, these two electrodes are separated by unit distance 1 meter okay and uh, whatever conductance value you are getting it is called the molar conductance okay so uh, molar conductance is basically um, given in notation lambda m and lambda m it is expressed as expressed as kappa by concentration, where lambda m is having unit Siemens meter square mole inverse, where kappa is expressed in Siemens meter inverse, concentration is mole Per meter cubed. Okay. Now, uh, if we would like to know why, how, how this molar conductance will depend on concentration of the of the material. But before that, let us have some idea of how simple conductance will will vary with concentration and other factors. Okay. So, before that let us have some idea. So, conductance as I mentioned that it is due to the due to the transport of transport of ions across the electrodes. So, therefore, ions means ions means things are to be considered are basically you know number of ions. So, that means, if more number of ions are there in the material, then it is expected that, that the amount of charge that will be transported across the electrodes will be more. So, number of ions is very important, it is an important uh, factor. Then charge, charge of the ion. Okay, charge means suppose you have you have say m plus say m 1 plus say m 2 2 plus and say m 3 3 plus. Okay. Suppose you have m 1 ion with unipositive charge say m 2 ion m 1 ion m 2 ion and m 3 ion 
with bi positive charge and m 3 ion with tri positive charge. That means, one ion contains 3 unit charges, this ion contains 2 unit charges and this ion contains only single charge. Then suppose, if this ion is transported across this 2 electrodes from here to here, say m 1 plus, then only 1 unit of charge will be transported from here to here. If m 2 plus is transported, 2 plus is transported from here to here, then if the other factors are remaining same, then you will be saying you will be you can you can tell that that in the same time or in the same duration suppose these two are reaching this this side in same time like T 1 time and here also T 1 time, then the amount of charge that is carry forwarded from here to here, it will be double for this, it will be triple for this. So, therefore, charge of the ion is very important in the conduction process. So, therefore, conductance will also depend on the charge of the ions. And next one is the speed of ions, speed of ions. Suppose, you have you have two ions say ion 1 and another is ion 2. Say this is also unipositive, this is also unipositive, but the thing is that suppose that it can swim faster than this one that is its mobility is more than this one. Then in in same time interval the amount of charge effectively it will it will transport more charges than this one because it is it, it can move faster than this one. So, therefore, that is why these are the three important parameters important factors that are needed to be considered while you know while discussing the conductance of a solution. Okay. So, therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, when a solution is diluted what do you expect to have? Suppose, you have one, one molar suppose you have say for example, uh, one molar say NaCl solution. Suppose, you dilute to say 10 to the power minus 2 molar and then you measure its conductance. Okay. Some value you can expect with the help of your uh, device that is you know this using Wheatstone bridge uh, principle. So, so some value you, are, you can expect that is maybe say for example, x is the is the measured conductance. Now, now you dilute it to say half into 10 to the power minus 2 molar. Okay, initially it was this much, now it is half into 10 to the minus 2 molar. Then conductance is expected to be expected to be reduced. Why? This is because of uh, because of the fact that the number of ions, okay, number of ions that is present in a given volume, it is now uh, reduced. Okay number of ions is reduced and since number of ions is reduced therefore, conductance is expected to be reduced. So, go back to the formula specific conductance equal to conductance into cell constant. So, cell constant is remaining same. So, what you are doing? You are diluting the solution. So, what happens to specific conductance? What is specific conductance? It is the conductance of a solution which is placed between two electrodes unit distance apart say 1 meter apart and also the electrodes are having 1 meter square cross sectional area, 1 meter square cross sectional area. So, so if you dilute it initially say for example, x number of say ions say for example, say x prime number of ions were present in this unit cube. Now, if you have diluted then this becomes x prime by 2. Okay. So, x prime by 2 means 
your number of charge carrier is reduced, reduced to half. So, number of ions is reduced, then charge carried by ions, charge on ions, no change and speed of ions. This is also also al also you know you can consider this that this one is also remaining unchanged. So, therefore, since the number of ions is reduced specific conductance decreases cell constant is fixed. So, therefore, conductance is expected to be uh, reduced. Okay. So, therefore, therefore again come back to again come back to molar conductance. So, that that we, we started to talk about and in between we, we wanted to you know learn about how conductance is dependent on various factors and we have you know explained to you that these are there are the major I mean three factors one is number of ions another is charge on the ions and speed of the ions. So, molar conductance is lambda m which is nothing but your specific conductance kappa by c where c is mole per meter cube and kappa is Siemens meter inverse. Now, if you now plot, if you now plot molar conductance that is lambda m with square root of concentration, it has been found that for the, it has been found that for the strong electrolyte, the curve follows like this. That is, if you dilute it in this direction, if you dilute it, then molar conductivity increases. So, why is this? So, why molar conductivity should uh, should increase when you you know when you dilute the solution? Now, now again lambda L lambda m is your kappa it is your conductance okay then specific conductance and then inverse of cell constant okay that means e by l okay so the idea is that you have to place your solution you have to place your solution against or in between two electrodes that are separated by unit length, unit length L is equal to 1. Okay. So, therefore, if your volume of the solution, volume of the solution is V, then effectively area of the electrode is nothing but V is equal to A into 1, because A is the area because you have to place your entire solution in between two electrodes those are separated by separated by unit length and your there is no restriction of the of the area of the electrodes so therefore area is freely changeable depending on the dilution of the solution therefore you can write from here v is equal to a so therefore from here you can write lambda m is equal to kappa into volume. Okay. So, therefore, how does lambda m change as a function of dilution? So, when you dilute means volume is increasing okay. and what is going to happen to kappa? Very simple that as I already explained to you here that when you dilute then kappa is reducing. So, therefore, there are two opposing factors one is kappa which is reducing as a result of dilution and volume which is increasing as a result of dilution. So, what is going to happen that your ultimately it has been found that the effect of change of volume is much more than the effect of dilution of I mean effect of lowering of kappa. 
So, therefore, in effect lambda m is found to increase. So, therefore, that is why lambda m as a function of square root if you plot it, it, it follows a trend like this, but only thing is that important point to note is that this type of linear dependence, this type of linear dependence is observed for strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte, strong electrolyte means the electrolyte which is which is completely ionized when you dissolve it in water. Okay. But uh, the situation is not so easy, I mean it is not like that like a linear dependence for a weak electrolyte. Okay. So, for weak, weak electrolyte what is happening let me draw it again in, a, in another piece of paper. For weak electrolyte, for weak electrolyte, uh, the plot, you know, it is square root of c, and this is lambda m. It follows a trend like this. Whereas, the strong electrolyte follows like this. So this is CH three. C O O H and this is say for example, K C L. So, this is quite you know understandable I mean why this is increasing like this, but in case of weak electrolyte you see that as you dilute it there is not much perceptible change in the higher concentration range. Say for example, uh, if your concentration is in mole per liter and the value Siemens centimeter square mole inverse. Then say for example, it is say about 200 and here it is say for example, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 these values are 0 0.4 okay, and 0 0.2. Then you see that in higher concentration region it is almost flat. Okay, a it is it is following the same trend as your you know this axis it, it is parallel to almost parallel to x axis but when you decrease the concentration you know you, it it follows a trend like this and in very low concentration region it steeply rises so why is it happening this is something strange uh, why strange because it is unlike this strong electrolyte this is following a different trend why it is like this? Now, one thing that that you should take into account that this CH3 COOH it is a weak electrolyte. So, it is not completely ionized. So, if you dilute it then its ionization increases. So, that means CH 3 COOH it is mostly in this form CH 3 COO minus. So, degree of dissociation if it is alpha then 1 minus alpha then alpha then alpha. So, therefore, degree of dissociation since degree of dissociation is very small in moderate concentration range. Therefore, you know number of charge carrier that is you know less in this region. The moment you keep on I mean the moment you increase the dilution that means, if you add more of water then the degree of dissociation I mean the amount of dissociation increases and therefore, therefore, what happens that whatever factors were there like like you know lambda m is equal to kappa into v. So, v factor is there v increases at the same time you know this kappa is also increasing because if you dilute it then number of ions number of charge carrier increases. So, total number of char if charge carrier increases means your kappa although there is a dilution effect, but the effect of this increase of charge carrier is coming into action and as a result of which a nonlinear dependence of 
you know nonlinear dependence of this uh, this lambda m versus root over c plot is there. So, in case of strong electrolyte you know this uh, for strong electrolyte lambda m that is the uh, molar conductance follows a train like this lambda m 0 plus a square root of c where lambda m 0 is a constant quantity and you can understand from here that that if if you go close to zero concentration that is infinitely dilute condition then then whatever lambda m value you are expecting that is nothing but lambda m zero so it is nothing but the value of lambda m extrapolated to zero concentration okay now so therefore this is called the limiting molar conductance or molar conductance at infinite dilution molar conductance at infinite by infinite dilution one can understand like this that it is a state of dilution at which if you further dilute the solution there is no perceptible change or there is no further change in the conductance value of the solution. So, that is called the that is called the um, state of infinite dilution. So, therefore, if you have a strong electrolyte if you plot like this then you have got certain points. So, so these are all measurable things. So, you measure and then you extrapolate just because the trend is linear. So, you extrapolate. So, wherever it is extrapolate wherever it is cutting the y axis is nothing but lambda m 0. So, so for for uh, strong electrolyte the job is easy uh, easier that you can measure the the value of lambda m at the infinite dilution condition. But the problem comes when you have you have this uh, this weak electrolyte that like acetic acid then you cannot apply you cannot apply this uh, uh, this extrapolation procedure to find out the find out the uh, infinitely dilution condition this lambda value ok. Now, so in that case what uh, you can do. So, it was first proposed by Kohlras long time back that uh, so Kohlras in long time back Kohlras is it is called the Kohlras law of independent migration of ions. So, what was the observation? Observation was like if you measure like lambda m 0 for say KCl and then lambda m 0 for NaCl and then again if you measure lambda m 0 KBr lambda m 0 NaBr. I mean if you if you uh, take a difference of lambda m 0 for KCl and NaCl then KBr NaBr or uh, lambda m 0 Ki 0 Nai it is found that its value is uh, say close to 23 Siemens centimeter square mole inverse okay, at some given temperature. Okay. In the same way lambda m 0 N A B R minus lambda m 0 N A C L is equal to lambda m 0 K B R minus lambda m 0 K C L and that comes out to be close to 2 uh, Siemens 
centimeter square mole inverse. That is your molar conductivity at infinite dilution if you take the difference it is found that this is following like this. So, this is a very strange behavior that for electrolytic conductor electrolytic uh, when we talk about the electrolytic conductance then uh, then uh, then it is uh, it is very strange uh, that KCL minus NACL KBR minus NABR KI minus NAI. So, you see that here these co ions here also co ions you see we if we if we want to take the difference of this lambda m 0 with same co ions then this difference K plus Na plus this is K plus Na plus this is K plus Na plus this difference is almost same. In the same way uh, you know this co ion sodium same this co ion case potassium same. So, B r minus C l B r minus L they are following the same trend. So, this is a strange behavior. So, so it is proposed that that at infinite dilution something is happening what is exactly happening conceptually that I already have explained to you or, or discussed that that the conductivity of a solution is dependent on the number of ions charge carried by ions and speed of ions. So, when you have reached the state of infinite dilution condition then the number of ions present in unit cube it is also fixed then charge on the ion it is already fixed only thing is that the speed of ions. Now, speed of ions is, is an important factor for the transport of electricity from one position to the other. Now, if the speed of ions is not changing any further due to dilution as I mentioned to you that state of infinite dilution is nothing, but that can be that can be stated in terms of conductance that if you further dilute the solution it does not bring in any change of the conductance of the solution. Therefore, no further change is happening even if you dilute that means, when you dilute solution a, a say a concentrated solution then suppose initially say there are there are two ions like this. So, they are interacting one with another and this is an that, that will be a natural uh, consequence because this one is charged this one is also charged. So, there will be charge charge interaction and many other factors may be solvation and other factors are also important. So, when you dilute means it is separated. So, interaction be between this ion and that ion is expected to be reduced. Okay. So, therefore, therefore uh, if this ion is moving if they are in close proximity these two ions are in close proximity then the movement of this ion is expected to be affected by the movement of this one and vice versa. But if you keep on diluting then a situation will be reached when this ion and the other ion they are so much separated that practically there is no effect of the interionic attraction or, or, or the influence of this ion on this one. So, therefore, the ions can move freely. So, when ions can move freely that means, they can freely contribute towards the conductance of the solution. Okay. So, that is why at infinitely dilute condition this one is independent this one is independent. So, their difference their difference in conductance or molar conductance is also also independent I mean it, it is not also dependent on the co ion because co ions are also separated from one I mean from from this one this ion or this ion separated a lot. So, that is why that is why the difference is nothing, but the but the difference uh, I mean here K C L minus N A C L K B R minus N A B R they are following the same trend. So, that is called the uh, that is called the cold recess law of independent migration of an and basically basically you can write at infinite dilution lambda m 0 K C L is nothing, but lambda 0 m k plus plus lambda 0 m sorry C l minus. Okay. So, in the same way if this this uh, uh, you know um, electrolyte is um, having more than one ion. So, accordingly you need to have some stoichiometric coefficient to be included over here. Okay. So, so therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, uh, basically at infinite dilution condition each ion 
will contribute each ion will contribute to a definite extent toward the toward the total conductance of the solution toward the total conductance of the solution and uh, let me uh, write some numbers i mean some of these uh, numbers for different uh, ions few ions i have uh, i will just uh, uh, write for you so lambda 0 it is siemens centimeter square mole inverse for h plus it is 349.6 for which minus it is 199.1 k plus it is 73.5 cl minus it is 76.3 so you see that that for different ions this contribution this contribution is is different okay so therefore uh, therefore uh, see this independent ion migration this concept has to be applied in 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 finding out in finding out the uh, the conductance uh, conductance of the i mean uh, in finding out the the lambda zero lambda this lambda m zero for weak electrolytes i mean direct you know direct uh, finding out of this uh, lambda m zero for weak electrolyte is not possible is not possible although that is possible for strong electrolyte in that case indirectly you have to find out the contribution of this okay contribution of these uh, uh, these ions individual ions and then you can find out you can find out this uh, mm, this lambda m zero so uh, this much for today so uh, we will take up this issue i mean uh, how to find out i mean um, how to make use of this lambda m0 for weak electrolyte in finding out in finding out uh, um, some important uh, quantity important quantity important characteristic quanti quantity of the weak electrolyte so what we have learned today so uh, we started with uh, this uh, conductance okay now we have talked about uh, this metallic conductor then some idea of the you know mm, basically this uh, mm, insulator then uh, the semiconductor we have just uh, given some example that's it and then we have we have we, we entered into this electrolytic conductor because in electrochemistry this uh, uh, this is relevant in electrochemistry so electrolytic conductor we have uh, we have entered into and the cause of this uh, this conductance we uh, discussed and then we we have used this uh, the concept of simple chemistry concept to to know how this uh, you know uh, this conductance and specific conductance these uh, these will uh, will you know vary as a function of concentration so uh, and uh, and we we try to understand this uh, this variation of molar conductance as a function of concentration for strong electrolyte and for electro weak electrolyte the direct determination of this uh, lambda m by electro the, um, by this uh, um, graphical extrapolation is not possible so in that case we need to find out the some some you know roundabout way in 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 getting the value of lambda m0 uh, for weak electrolytes and and we'll take up this application of this lambda m0 measurement for for weak electrolyte in the next class so till then that's all for today thank you